Now we get to one of my favorite parts of this lecture. Warning, it, in the beginning it's a bit complicated, but the result we get from this is amazing. So we want to look at the unit paraboloid in three-dimensional space. That's defined as the set coordinate is x squared plus y squared. So in this I will show you the whole thing in two dimensions because drawing in three dimensions is not so easy. In the end I will show you a demo also in three dimensions that hopefully makes it clearer. So this is our unit paraboloid in R to the 2. Imagine we just look at it from the side for now. So we have a point set in the plane. That means that every point P has some x coordinate, some y coordinate, and the z coordinate is zero. Now we want to project those points onto the unit parabola by going straight up. At which coordinate do we end up here? We have the same x and y coordinate and the z coordinate we get from the formula of the unit parabola. So we have px squared plus py squared. That we can do for all our points in the plane. So far, so good. Now I want to define a half plane by this point P. And this will be magic. So our half plane is defined as follows. Z coordinate is equal to 2 times x coordinate of P times x plus 2 times y coordinate of P times y minus Px squared plus Py squared. If we plug in the coordinates of p prime, then we plug in px here, so we have 2px squared. Here we have 2py squared. And then we remove this, then we have px squared plus py squared. So we get exactly the set coordinate of p prime. That means the p prime lies on this half plane. Okay, so far so good. Now let's take another point q. And the distance between these two points is the Euclidean distance in two-dimensional space. So it's difference of the x-coordinate squared plus difference of the y-coordinate squared and the square root of that. We can again project q upwards to the unit paraboloid, and we can also project it downwards to the half plane of p. Now this gives us some point q of p. What are the coordinates of this point? Um, the x and y coordinate are of course the same as q, and the z coordinate we get from plugging those coordinates into the formula of h of p. So we get 2px qx plus 2py qy minus px squared plus py squared. This still looks a lot like magic. But now I want to look at the distance between q prime and q of p. What is the distance between them? They have the same x and y coordinate, so it's just the difference of their z coordinates. The z coordinate of q prime is the same as here, q, qx squared plus qy squared. Difference of q of p is this one. So we get this as the difference. Now we want to reorder this a bit. We want to take all x coordinates together, so qx squared minus 2px qx plus px squared, and put the y coordinates together. Now this is a binomial formula. This is qx minus px squared. This is qy minus py squared. So we get exactly the distance between the points squared from here. That means whichever point on this plane h of p we take, the distance to our unit parabola is exactly the distance to p squared. So we can encode the distance between p and any other point with z equals 0 by this plane and this unit parabola. And in particular, that means that the intersection of this plane with the unit parabola is exactly the point p prime, because this, of course, is the only one where the distance is zero. Okay, so this is funny. This is interesting, 
we have this magic formula, we have these magic uh, planes, and somehow they encode stuff, but we still don't know what that helps us. First of all, this plane is a tangent to a uniparabola. That comes from the fact that this is the only intersection point. And second, we can define, of course, the same plane also for our point Q. And then, where these planes intersect, we can project that back to our set equals zero coordinate. And what that gives us, I want to show you now with the following theorem. We have a point set in the plane, and we move it to three dimensions by assigning set coordinate zero to all of them. Then we have our set of planes, defined as with the formula on the previous page, and a unit parabola. We have the projection of them, that's exactly the same as before. And now I want to look at the upper envelope of this set of planes. So here are this line, so we have this upper envelope. The upper envelope intersects at some points, or in, if we have planes, also at some segments. And those we want to project down to set equals zero. Now, what do we get from this? Maybe you can see it from here already, but before I tell you, I want to show you a demo. So here we will have the two-dimensional view on the left and the three-dimensional one at the right. Let's first start by adding a few points, say these five. Now, we want to project those points to the unit parabola. Let's do that here. Now we see we have these projections. Now we want to get the upper envelope of all these planes. That looks like this. So these are all the upper envelope parts of these planes where they intersect. Now if I project them back to set equals zero, what do we get? Let's see. We can rotate until we see the whole thing from below. Now, do you see what this is? This is exactly the Voronoi diagram of our point set. And the projection we get from the intersection points here gives us exactly the Voronoi diagram. And what's also amazing is we had this duality between the Voronoi diagram and the Delaunay triangulation. Oh, the Delaunay triangulation here is just connect those vertices that uh, where the Voronoi cells share an edge. Or we could define it via these empty circles. But maybe that's the nicer one. And today we established a duality between the upper envelope and the lower convex cell. So instead of taking the upper envelope of these planes, let's take the convex hull of this point set. And now I want to project the convex hull down to set equals zero. Now what we get is exactly the Delaunay triangulation. And this I find amazing. We can take some parabola, it doesn't even have to be uniparabola, it can be any parabola. I can even change this parabola here and make it larger or make it smaller. And the projection is always still the Delaunay triangulation, no matter how this parabola looks like. It always works. We can take any of these parabolas, we project our points upwards, then we take the convex hull of this and project it backwards and we get the Delaunay triangulation. Or instead of taking the convex hull, we uh, compute the upper envelope of the tangent planes we project that back and we get the Voronoi diagram. And this is something that blew my mind when I saw it for the first time. So just from the projection of the upper envelope, we get the Voronoi diagram. That means we can compute the Voronoi diagram in two dimensions via the upper envelope in three dimensions. And we established a duality between the upper envelope in three dimensions with the convex hull of a point set in three dimensions. 
and the convex hull of a point set, we just learned how to compute randomized incrementally with an expected order of n log n time. So that also gives us an order of n log n expected time algorithm to compute the Voronoi diagram and to compute the Delaunay triangulation with the duality of a point set in the plane. I hope that you find this just as fascinating as I did. And thank you for watching.